a lot of windows were broken, spilling glass onto the street and making the display sparkle, as though the shabby chic furniture or gourmet cupcakes had been sprinkled with diamonds. Then I noticed it wasn't just a lot of windows. It was every window. I figured it made sense the earthquake broke glass. But just around the corner, I hadn't noticed windows broken on the rows of townhouses. Already alert, I froze when a beam of light shone out of a building up ahead. I didn't need to see the exact pastel shade of the shop to know it was duck egg blue. The light jiggled, then vanished. The sound of shattering porcelain echoed in the street, followed by a boy-like chuckle. Hey! The word came out before I stopped to think. Hey! Get out of there! That was my mom's shop. The hell I was going to let someone trash or loot it. Getting called out would make them run away, right? The possibility it wouldn't only struck me when five teen boys in hoodies jumped out through the cleared window. I didn't recognize the guys from school, and they didn't dress like boys from this area either. More like guys from the housing estate a couple of burbs over, who sometimes crashed parties around here. One or two held flashlights, shining them my way. Sure, they might be a few years younger than me, and I stood taller than a couple of them, but it was still five scary Poorsville thugs against me. Why did I feel like I could deal with this? The fizzy high I was on had my confidence up and blocking the part of my mind that knew this could be dangerous and that feeling invincible could just make it worse. A point proved when the boys headed for me instead of making a guilty dash. Stay back, I have pepper spray, I bluffed reaching my hand into a pocket of my trench coat. I grabbed for my phone instead, swiped it on, but couldn't dial on the touch screen without looking. What would they do if they saw me dialing? Back off or advance faster? It didn't seem worth the risk when I wasn't sure the emergency number would even redirect or work with most of the network down. I eat that stuff for breakfast, one of them joked. I took steady steps away as the boys came closer. I'll call the police. Relax, we're just out for some fun. The chuckle in this one's voice sounded like the same one who had been laughing at smashing things in Mom's shop. His idea of fun worried me. Glass crunched on the concrete footpath behind me, and I spun around to find one of the boys had snuck up on me. He made to grab for my arm, and I stepped out of his way. Anger shone from him, and my body flared with adrenaline. The five of them penned me in and took turns pushing at me or grasping for me. Somehow, I managed to slip and dodge through their attempts to pin me down. The more I avoided them, the more I saw the anger in them build. No one had ever been this mad at me before. It scared me. Someone help! I cried out, but my voice was lost in the wide street. I doubted anyone would hear. I ducked under a wide swing from the closest guy, meant to hit me rather than hold me. Remembering my self-defense class, I pulled my keys out of my pocket in one hand and phone in the other. I made a wild jab at his chest with my longest key while I looked at my phone screen, thumbing in an emergency call. The key sank into flesh, startling me. I didn't expect to break skin at all. In shock as my hand warmed with the guy's blood, I paused too long and was shoved in the back. I fell flat on my face. My dropped phone skittered out of reach. I barely felt the fall, but when I tried to call for help again, there was no air in my lungs. One of them grabbed my shoulder and rolled me over. I took his hand in both of mine and twisted. I swear I heard bones break. I also thought I heard footsteps approaching fast. I might have just been hearing things. Just wishful thinking as the guy cradled his wrist, calling me something I won't repeat, and kicked me in the side of the head. I blacked out for a bit. Sounds of scuffling faded in, and energy surged through my body. Snapping my eyes open, I watched a new man in a white button-down shirt throw one of the hoodies against a power pole. 
actually picked him up and threw him. The others were already running or stumbling away. The last kid slumped against the pole. Dusting his hands, my savior turned around to reveal the face of a male model. Are you all right? Even his voice was dreamy. I tried to sit up so I wasn't so awkward and prone, wanting to be more presentable for this godlike figure. Hmm. <laughs> Ow. Crap. Damn it. The guy chuckled, and his smile made my heart jump. When he grabbed my hands and helped me up with perfect care, I thought my heart would lose it entirely. You were amazing, he said, bending to collect my phone and keys from nearby. When I heard someone calling for help, I came as quick as I could. Saw most of the fight while I ran down the street. I thought you had them dealt with on your own for a minute. Very impressive. I groaned. Impressive like a high-jumping lemming. He handed my phone and keys back to me, giving me a scrutinizing look. But really, how do you feel? How did I feel? I'd just been thrown on the ground and kicked in the head, but actually I felt... Good? Does that mean I'm in shock? Maybe. Maybe something better. I bet you feel better than good, don't you? I shrugged. I did still feel pretty tingly. I think I've been on an adrenaline kick most of the night. He chuckled. Getting kicked like you did. You aren't surprised you're already feeling okay? You don't realize how fast you were moving back then, do you? And did you know you almost ripped that guy's hand off? I did what? It's okay. It was self-defense. Jake paused for a moment. What if I said you are more than normal? Something different, better, possibly even supernatural. Would you freak on me, or... Would I think it was a dream come true? The latter...